Right now on Fast Track News, new information on the incident between a white police officer and a black student. The student's attorney speaks to Fast Track News. Plus, a new academic term is one step closer to a reality. Will students take advantage of the extra time to study abroad or take a class to get ahead? And Purdue is making more giant leaps when it comes to space aviation, thanks to a professor here. More information on that next, here on Fast Track News. Good afternoon, Boilers. It's Friday, February 25th. I'm Jaden Rusi. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of Fast Track News. The investigation continues into an incident between a white Purdue police officer and a black student. Fast Track News reporter Abby Myers spoke with the attorney representing student Adonis Tuggle. She's here with new information. Abby, what have you learned? That's right, Jaden. We've been closely following this story, and after speaking with Adonis' attorney, we have learned that the family and legal team have watched the body and dash cam footage taken the night of the incident, and some more details about what has happened since the initial incident with police. Andrew M. Stroth, the managing director of the Action Injury Law Group and the civil rights lawyer who represents Adonis Tuggle and his mother Cornelia Dawson, told us that the university has honored his request to view the footage from the incident. We have watched uh, the relevant body cam video evidence and we have listened to the 911 call and the university has in a forthright manner uh, let us view that evidence. This is the latest development in the incident involving Purdue student Adonis Tuggle and PUPD officer John Selke, which took place earlier this month. Police were called to the scene on February 4th, and on the night of the incident, Stroth claims Tuggle was unarmed and posing no serious threat to his girlfriend or police. Adonis was in his shorts. He had just come from the gym. He had his hands up. He was unarmed and did not present a threat. So based on standard use of force principles, there was nothing that Adonis did nor his girlfriend that would have warranted the zero to 100 response. On February 9th, Adonis posted a cell phone video of the incident taken by his girlfriend, a video which has now reached over 2 million views. President Mitch Daniels and the PUPD released statements about the internal investigation, and Officer Selke was put on leave until further notice. On February 10th, Adonis's mother, Cornelia Dawson, sent a letter to President Daniels, where she explained that she is disturbed, disappointed, and fearful for her son, and asked Daniels to do everything in his power to hold the Purdue University police officer accountable. We want there to be a review of the use of force policies. We want to make sure there's a review and training as it relates to de-escalation. We want to potentially um, have a town hall with you know, black students and other students and the police and the chief of police. You know, I think what we need to do is double down on the equity task force. And that's an amazing document and an amazing vision, but how do we make it reality? And how do we make sure the black experience on Purdue's campus is a healthy experience? The family has also been in communication with the Board of Trustees and are hoping to work closely with Purdue's Equity Task Force to ensure that an incident like this never happens again. Abby Myers, Fast Track News. Thank you, Abby. Fast Track News will continue to follow this story. Let's talk about the weather, which doesn't seem to be making up its mind. Another brief taste of spring this week, but snow and ice returned once again. Meteorologist Marcus Truccio is here with a look ahead to the weekend. Marcus? That's right, the snow and ice did make a return, but we're making a recovery slowly throughout this weekend. Today, we are going to have a high of 32, so it is on the chillier side, but we do have winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour, making it feel even colder in around the mid-20s for most of the day today. I do want to point out that the sunset is now after 6.30, so it's only going to stay brighter from here on out. But taking a look at the hourly forecast for today, we see... And the clouds are going to stick around for most of the day, so we're not going to get much heating from the sun. 32 at around 3 p.m., and that's when we'll reach our high temperature from the day, and it'll start cooling off towards sunset. But we will see some clearing as we go into the nighttime hours. If you have any Friday night plans, it will be pretty chilly, 25 to 23, but those winds will also be backing off. So you will need that coat, but it won't be like biting like it has been in some weekends in the past couple of weeks. And like I said, those skies will be clearing. Check back here with me for what. I got going on for the seven-day forecast. Back to you, Jaden. On Monday, the University Senate, which is a governing body of the Purdue faculty, met to discuss the addition of a winter term to the academic calendar. Reporter Bella Vino took a look at what students could do during a winter term and how soon it could become a reality. Bella? 
On February 21st, Purdue University held one of its monthly Senate meetings with one of the big discussion items on the agenda being the addition of a winter session to the academic calendar. Though not approved yet, this might mean beginning next year, students can participate in a study abroad program through the months of December and January. We spoke with Brian Harley, Associate Dean of International Programs and Director of Programs for Study Abroad, to learn more about what this would mean for students. Students would anticipate the period of time in late December, early January, and relative to there being st departmental study abroad programs at that point, and I don't mean all three weeks of that necessarily, but any portion thereof, such as the latter part in January, that students could expect there would be programs led by faculty and staff, um, which will be announced in, in what I would call the relatively near future, such as after May. In the proposal for the addition of a winter session, it also stated that in the following years, students might have the opportunity to take asynchronous classes as well. So I would definitely take a study abroad because winter break, I'm typically here just kind of like surviving. <laughs> There's like no one on campus. So yeah, I would definitely do that. I probably wouldn't do either of those options because like when I'm at home for a break, I like want to be home and like see my family that doesn't live with me now. So I probably wouldn't choose to study abroad or take a class because like that's when I feel like I'm away from school. So I wouldn't really want to like have to do school when that's like my break during the year. As I was talking to students, they definitely had some mixed emotions about the possible addition. So we will just have to wait until the next Senate meeting on March 21st to hear the outcome. I'm Bella Vina reporting from Fast Track News. Thanks, Bella. Now for an update on the campus COVID numbers. According to the Purdue dashboard, the positivity rate of COVID-19 over the last seven days around campus has dropped to 4%, which makes it a small decrease from last week. We are still in the early stages of easing face mask requirements. It's been a week, in fact, since face masks were made optional in many areas of campus. You no longer have to wear a mask in most public areas, like dining courts, the Co-Rec, and even Mackey Arena. However, masks are still required in instructional spaces like classrooms and labs, healthcare facilities, and for combos due to contractual obligations. NASA is celebrating an important anniversary that is a connection to Purdue, as well as outer space. Reporter Matt Byrne has more. Last Friday marked the one-year anniversary of NASA's Perseverance rover landing on Mars. Bryony Horgan is an associate professor of planetary science at Purdue. For the past year, Professor Horgan has worked on the camera team for the mission. Now on the surface, I actually get to help with the operations day-to-day, -day, helping you know design images and sequences and all of that and getting that back from the rover and working on data analysis. I also work a lot on the operations side of the rover, and so I help, you know, I, I have roles like tactical science lead or long-term planner. And these are roles where we actually get to help uh, decide what the rover is going to do either on a day-to-day -day or kind of, you know, month-to-month -month basis. The main goal of Perseverance is to collect samples of Mars that will be brought back to Earth. These rocks will be the first samples from another planet that have been brought back to Earth and will be analyzed to look for signs of life. So there's so much about Mars we could learn if we brought samples back. And of course, the biggest thing is trying to understand whether or not Mars ever harbored any kind of life. And we're mostly focused on looking for microbial life because we think that's the kind of life that maybe had time to evolve on Mars before it got really dry and pretty inhospitable. Uh, but, you know, this is a huge question, right? So is there life in the universe? And I think this mission, we have a chance to answer that. Professor Horgan's favorite part of working on Perseverance is getting to discover things never seen by humans. So we get up, we get the images down from our satellites, and we get to see where the rover is and what new, what new things are around us. And it's really exciting because it really is exploration, right? We're seeing things that you know, no human has ever seen before. We're planning out new places to explore and new things to learn and you know, a whole part of Mars we've never been to. And so it's been really, really exciting helping to plan that and, and get that data back every day. Professor Horgan encourages students interested in space exploration to get involved at Purdue and to apply for internships at NASA. Yeah, so if you want to get involved in Mars exploration, space exploration, I mean, the place to do it is NASA, right? And there are so many fantastic NASA internships. You can still apply now. Now is actually a great time to apply for those. Uh, there's NASA has a big website listing all those opportunities, and you can be from, you know, almost any major and apply for those. So I really recommend doing that. We also have a lot of great planetary science classes and even a major here at Purdue. So if you really want to get involved, you know, we're here to help. This has been Matt Byrne with Fast Track News. NASA plans to launch a sample retriever lander to Mars, but not until 2026 at the earliest. Coming up after the break, support your fellow Boilermakers and their artwork right here on campus at the Ringle Gallery.
and also still to come, do you have a passion for podcasts? How would you like to make $700? If you answered yes, the Center for C-SPAN has just a thing for you. The African American Studies and Research Center held an event at the Black Cultural Center Wednesday night, all about the power and the challenges of getting black women more involved in access to the political process. Reporter Vinnie Guan was there and explains what came out of the discussion. Vinny? Thanks, Jaden. Black women have been playing a leading role in the fight for the right to vote. I'm here in Black Culture Center where people getting around to discuss about the critical in the play among race, gender, and political mobilization around the issues like votes, registration, and ballot accessibility. The attendance of those events has been incredible since the PUPD incident happened last week. Black Americans use immigration as a way to talk about their still partial inclusion in the American body politics. Some of the women in attendance include speakers Dr. Nyan B. Cotter and Andrea Glasby, professors of political science and Valeris Sinclair Chapman, an author and a professor at Purdue. This event was put on by the African American Studies and Research Center to raise awareness that there are still difficulties when it comes to voting as a minority. The white population seems to be shrinking as a voting bloc. They are putting roadblocks in the way to decrease the number, to decrease access to make it harder for those rising populations, young people, blacks, Latinos, in order for them to register to vote. And that seems to be the, probably the most challenging thing right now. And particularly since the Voting Rights Act has been sh gutted, that we don't have the protections that we used to, the federal protections that we used to have when that happened. I think that um, on multiple fronts, black women are organizing to address issues related to COVID-19 and black women's health. Um, uh, maternity um, health and welfare, the well-being of children and education, um, uh, disparities in the, in the workplace, um, um, and I think in, even in voting and organizing as we talked about here tonight. A major point that women here tonight want other people to realize is that they need help. Black women cannot be the only ones fighting for the minority voting rights. They hold events like this so others can learn about their struggles and join the cause. The issue of race and gender in politics and academic are still persist. Black women are still struggling and looking for ways to ensure we have a more egalitarian society. I'm Vinny Guan, reporting from Fast Track News. Happening this week, the 2022 Art and Design Jerried Undergraduate Exhibition in the Ringo Gallery. The Ringo Gallery is located on the main floor of the Stewart Center, so in between classes or while you're roaming campus, stop in and take a look at the artwork of your fellow Boilermakers. The exhibit runs through March 11th. According to Purdue Galleries, this annual exhibition features a wide variety of mediums, from ceramics, metals, paintings, drawings, to interior designs, to just name a few. And another reminder for those of you planning to live in university residences next year, Monday at 11.55 p.m. is a deadline to pick a space or to cancel your contract without penalty. Any incomplete contracts will be canceled. The Purdue Center for C-SPAN Scholarship and Engagement, or CCSE for short, is currently taking applications for some of their advantageous programs. Reporter Jack Sirius sat down with Managing Director Andrea Langrish to discuss some of these programs, such as a podcast competition and what they have to offer for Purdue students. Purdue University is known for its various prestigious programs that are extremely opportunistic for students. One of these programs is called the CCSE. I sat down with one of their representatives, Andrea Langrish, 
to discuss what exactly it is that CCSE does at Purdue and some of the exciting events that they have to offer. I'm Andrea Langrish. I am the Center for C-SPAN Scholarship Engagement Managing Director. So CCSE's mission is to get students and faculty using the uh, C-SPAN Video Library as a resource. It's got 40 years of primary video vi from C-SPAN and it's uh, a great way for students to learn history, but then also politics. And the podcast competition was designed to allow students to creatively use um, the medium of audio to create podcasts on a variety of topics. And we've given you three topics, actually. So to create these podcasts on these topics that will use some audio from the C-SPAN video library. And if they get moved through to the top 20, uh, the qualified competitors from the top 20 group get $100 just for competing. And the winners, because there's three categories, we'll have three sets of winners, the winners will get up to $700 per entry. On top of CCSE's podcast competition, they offer other opportunities such as Pizza and Politics and Boilers Go to DC. Pizza and Politics is a program that we provide every single semester. We bring in experts to talk about topics that the students say they want to hear about. So the next one we have coming up on March 2nd is about political polarization in the U.S. and within the parties. And we're bringing in Grace Panetta from Business Insider, who has written a lot about polarization and elections and is going to be talking directly to students. So not only do students get free pizza, but they get a chance to talk directly to somebody who knows this stuff from D.C. And then our big program this semester is the Boilers Go to D.C., which is, uh, we call it BGDC, where we take you to Washington, D.C. to study for two weeks with um, Brian Lamb, who's the founder of C-SPAN, also a Purdue alum. He will be taking us around the city and we'll be meeting people from C-SPAN themselves, the executive team, the producers, the camera people. We'll also get a chance to talk with media experts and politicians. What would a Purdue program be without offering internships to its students? It seems as if CCSE has everything to offer and you get unique opportunities to help plan events. You get to meet um, nationally known figures in media or in the government or authors, historians, academics. It's a really great opportunity to, to create a portfolio of career ready skills. Reporting for Fast Track News, I'm Jack Saria. Thanks Jack. A lot of great opportunities for Boyo makers to get involved. Your full forecast is coming up. Marcus, when can I break out the flip-flops? I don't know if we'll be breaking out the flip-flops necessarily, but it, it will be cold this weekend, but it's not going to last for long. Find out when we'll have a big time warm-up and a possible storm for next weekend, next on Fast Track. Being involved in the three-year program at Purdue made it easier to say to myself, I could get done in three years. The three-year program helped save me a ton of money. And not completing my fourth year, I would save around $30,000. It will give you an advantage, if anything. Doing the three-year program at Purdue has shown me that I have motivation to do whatever it takes to get my degree. Welcome back to Fast Track, everyone. I'm Marcus Truchio here with your full forecast, and it's pretty quiet around the country today. That storm that blew through here yesterday is now working its way off the East Coast, giving some heavy snow to areas like Vermont and New Hampshire. But here in Indiana, we are relatively quiet because of these two high-pressure systems, and that's going to keep us quiet for the whole week. As we take a look at the weekend, the rest of today is going to be cloudy, like I said before, but getting into tomorrow, we're going to have lots of sunshine. It's still going to be cool around 35 degrees. We're going to get down to a low of 22, but overall, a really nice day for February. And then once we work our way into Sunday, that's when our warming trend will start to begin. We got a high of 42. It's going to be sunny outside, and it's going to be a really great day to do any outdoor plans that you have, considering it's been pretty chilly the past couple of days. As we work our way into Sunday, you will be able to spend some time outside. Here's a little forecast for Horticultural Park for you if you want to spend the afternoon out there. It's going to be 35 at around 11 a.m., so maybe wait until after lunchtime to head outdoors but once you hit two to five o'clock that's gonna be a nice sweet spot where we get into the lower 40s and the sun will be out so it'll feel even a little bit warmer because we're not gonna have as much of a breeze outside so then once we take a look at the seven day forecast, Sunday's just the beginning. Monday, we're gonna be up in the mid 40s and Tuesday, we're gonna be pushing 50 degrees and then working our way later into next week, 
We have 55 on Thursday, and it's going to keep on climbing into the weekend. Later, I will talk about the possibility for a storm on Saturday. That will be coming up later on Fast Track. We've all been waiting to get revenge against Rutgers after the half-court heartbreak back in December. But this past Sunday, we defeated our biggest rival, the free throw strike. We were 24 for 29 from the line, shooting 83%. 29% of the Boilers' points came from the charity stripe. Ivy led the pack with 25, but it was a great all-round performance with five different players reaching double digits. We didn't look back after tip-off because we never trailed the Scarlet Knights and even had a lead as high as 20 points. Mason Gillis, widely known as the heart and soul of this team, continues to turn heads by shooting over 47% from three throughout this season. That number is the fourth best single season mark in school history. Oh yeah, and this happened. Listen to Mackey erupt after this Ivy dunk. Few. Didn't know Purdue had two airports, but he just took flight. No easy baskets in Mackey, but a whole lot of fun. For us Boilermakers, at least. Tomorrow, we take on Michigan State at Breslin, and next Tuesday, it's a top 15 matchup against the Badgers for our last away game of the regular season. The women also came away with a win over the Scarlet Knights. They were on the road in New Jersey with the final score of 70-59 to with a 20-point performance from junior Abby Ellis. Safe to say Rutgers fans aren't happy with Purdue this week. The Boilermaker baseball team is off to a great start for the 2022 season. Last weekend, Purdue took care of business down in Texas as they swept South Dakota State over a four-game set. Cam Thompson had a big series telling nine RBIs, including a three-run home run in Game 1. Pitching was also a huge factor last weekend for the Boilermakers. Landon Weens had a stellar start to Game 1, striking out seven walking zero and allowing no runs in four and a third innings. In the remaining three games, the Boilers used 13 pitchers to get the job done, but they were able to limit South Dakota State to less than 10 runs combined. Purdue will look to continue their momentum this weekend against the Princeton Tigers. Purdue softball had a rough go around things last weekend at the Red and Black Showcase. Only winning one of their five games, two of those losses came to number 13 ranked Georgia Bulldogs. Purdue showed some signs of potential, however, smacking seven home runs as a team in just five games. And in one of the games, they were able to take down Delaware Blue Hens 3-2. The Boilermakers look to turn things around this weekend at the Purple and Gold Challenge in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And wrestling wrapped up their regular season with a loss at Northwestern, 20-15. The Boilers will now prepare to travel to Nebraska, the site of the Big Ten Tournament. That's a wrap for sports. A final check of weather is just minutes away. I'm Sean English, and you're watching Fast Track News. Welcome back for final weather here on Fast Track. I'm Marcus Truscio, and as we take a look at the seven-day forecast, it's looking very nice for this time of year. I don't remember the last time at the end of February and March that I saw quite a dry stretch right like this with temperatures like this. We're going to be in the mid-40s Sunday through Wednesday, and once we get into Thursday and beyond, that's when we're going to see upper 50s to close to 60, and we do not have a chance of precipitation all the way until next Saturday. Here's just one single model depiction of what we may be dealing with next weekend. Like I said, those temperatures will be very warm, so no snow to worry about, but we may have some scattered showers next weekend. And beyond that, into next Monday or Tuesday, we might have a bigger storm to worry, worry about, but the temperatures will still be high, so most likely will be just rain. That's it for weather here on Fast Track. This is Marcus Truscio with your weather.
I'm Maddie Kamatz, and I'm the director of Fast Track Social Media Channels this week. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and TikTok to see what we're up to during the week. Plus, you can watch all past episodes on Purdue's Fast Track YouTube channel. That's it for this week's edition of Fast Track News. I'm Jaden, not Ivy Rusi. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back next week with more of your campus news, weather, and sports.